supplementary questions and answers. And thank you, Minister, and I'm confused. We had the EU Commissioner for Energy Regulation here a number of weeks ago, and his informal advice, I suppose, to the Joint Committee was if any member states asked, he would advise them not to make a decision in relation to hydraulic fracturing for a number of years, because the, the, there are works going on in Poland, and that's where there are studies been done, and a lot of information has yet to come to hand. At the meeting of the Joint Committee yesterday, we had officials from the department, we had the EPA, and we had the Energy for, for Good Alliances, I think, yeah. Uh, and a lot of the discussion was the information isn't there yet to make a decision. Tom Bourne, who declined to attend at the Joint Committee meeting, said uh, they feel that uh, their participation and their discussions would not be meaningful at this time, obviously saying that, that there's more information needed. So that's all pretty clear. But then when I take up the EU news bulletin, for the Irish Regions Brussels office, dated September 2012, issue 94, I see where the Commission DG for Energy is offering funding to public authorities to organise early stage dialogue with citizens and to launch information campaigns on a shale gas as a basis for informing decision making of its potential industrial exploitation. And not only that, but there's a budget of 200,000 to cover five or six hearings, and that budget is, to, is 50 per cent of the total eligible costs. So here we are, 400,000 is going to be spent for, local, for public authorities, and I, I'm not sure what public authority means, to inform the decision-making process and to have public consultations. Question? The question is, why are we organising a public information campaign, and why are we spending 400,000 on a public information campaign when everybody involved in this process knows that we can't answer simple questions like, is this going to damage agriculture? Is it going to damage tourism? Is it going to, to damage animal health? Is it going to damage human health? And the say, supplementary question, is there not a risk that public consultations along the lines here in the absence of full information will be damaging to communities and will cause fear Thank among you. the communities. I think uh, there may be a conflict of, I don't mean a conflict, I think that you're talking about, if, you, if I heard you correctly, it's a European, it's from the Director General of Energy in the European, so that's, that's their process. Our process is that it has already commenced because under the previous minister, Fianna Fáil minister, uh, a licensing option was in fact issued. And that, that, that's, that was the first start of the clock here. So that clock runs until November of this year, when the company, Tamburin, must decide as to whether they must present their work program, and by February of next year, they must decide whether they're going to apply for an expiration license. Now, an expiration license does not allow fracking as such, not commercial exploitation. So what we're saying is this, that because, as you rightly point out, because of the concerns nationally and internationally about the process, about the, the facts that have not yet been discovered in terms of, and I could just refer to some of them, uh, the, quest, the key issues are the question of well integrity, uh, the, the vital resources of groundwater must not be affected, the consequences of leaks or blowouts, fracking fluid leaking into aquifers, uh, chemicals, uh, whether they're carcinogenic or not, uh, what happens to the methane, the knowledge of local geology, the carbon footprint in relation to natural gas, the impacts of water and fracking, the impacts of the additives, and all of those issues. They're all issues which have to be considered. And no decision will be made in relation to any fracking as such. And the exploration license uh, will not Thank allow you. commercial fracking. Uh, so until all of those studies are available to us, we will not make a decision. And the earliest we expect the information to be on our desks would be 2014. Thank you. So absolutely nothing will happen, uh, at least until that information is available. Thank you, Mr. 
EU newsletter. Well, again, what, what the EU newsletter is, I, I, I'm not, I haven't been briefed on that, but thank you for bringing it to my attention. Okay. In terms of our consultation process here, if a licence application came in uh, for, for exploration, there would have to be an environmental impact statement. There would have to be full planning permission, starting at the local authority, moving up to board plan, and you. so on. So there's no question that, but the public will be fully and absolutely consulted at every stage of the planning process. Absolutely, we, we categorically. Yes, that is, yes.